I did love getting Minetta's. How do you pronounce that? Because I'm going from the uh, narrator, narrator. Well, I mean, I have no idea. <laughs> <laughs> I, I said it Minatus in my head, Minatus. but I, I don't know. Because the narrator I, I is like Minertus. I don't know how I need... And the narrator would put on a bit yes, of an accent when doing it, and so it was Minertus, and I was like, okay. Yeah. He he had one of my, not favorite, but the quotes that made me gasp, and it was something like when he was trying to understand Irina, because Irina is, according to him, so bland, so unattractive, so uninspiring, just so nothing if she was a color she would be beige like it was so interesting to to see him start sketching her and be like what what do you see but I think the quote was something like it wasn't that she was that she wasn't beautiful it's that she wasn't even interestingly ugly and and I (laughs) that pierced deep because there's probably some guys out there that have legit thought that (laughs) and you just kind of see the cruelness of men's worth on women which is are you beautiful or are you rich and can you provide a dowry so I thought that that was a really really interesting take and that quote was so uh, brutal but Minertus's story we learn is so heart-wrenching as well he didn't sign up for this deal he is a byproduct of someone else's bargain and he's trying to not do the best that he can but make the most of literally having to endure torture and he still didn't get to choose who he wanted to marry that was a choice that was made for him as well as a reader and through Irina's eyes as well, we're really struggling with it. Do I hate him or do I sympathize him? Like, what were you hoping to get from, I guess, Minatus's antagonism? So, you know, one of the things, obviously, that I was playing with in this was the sense of redemption, right? Redeemable, who's who is and who isn't, and um, the ways in which sometimes evil acts have their roots in something that we don't see, right? Or that we don't understand. So the Star King, his people are, are doing bad things. But some of what they're doing is literally trying to survive, right? And Mernatius as well, you know, he starts out as just the sort of obvious villain. He's just horrible. Yeah. And then we realize, right, of course, he, is, he is the child, right? He's the ch- the the child of the bargain in Rumpelstiltskin. You know, the, the I'll give you my firstborn son if you give me these three, uh, if you spin the stone to gold for me. And so he's this mortgaged person. And oh. in a way, right, he himself, he forgot to choose. You know, the people that he loved were nearly killed, not because he wanted them to be so that he could have power, right? That in a way, you know, and his critique of Arita's beauty, right, is not sort of one that interestingly ugly in particular because it comes back to the fact that he is, he's artistic, right? He's aesthetic. He, he, mm. he values beauty. Uh, and that is his only consolation. It's the one thing that he's consoling himself with is essentially that he's trying to find beauty in the superficial because he has no no deeper beauty in his yeah. life. Yeah. And at the same time, right, these, these kinds of evil, these kinds of villains are in contrast to Chernobog, who is this villain who is just nothing but hunger, right? Who is wolf, right? the wolf that uh, Miriam's mother talks about mm-hmm. to Wanda, right? You know, some men have a wolf inside. Chernobog is the thing inside Ire- inside Wanda's father. And even, for instance, Irina's father, right, who also seems like the villain. This is not a, this is not a kind world. This is not a yeah. gentle world full of surplus where, you know, it, it's not asking much to be kind to people and generous and fair, be fair. This is a world in which, in fact, people starve, people die routinely. And, you know, everybody is thinking not unreasonably about protecting themselves their families their communities you know and when do you when do you make that gesture right you know so miriam miriam choosing to use the tunnel that is their kept secret and wh- whose secret is a sort of communal property of the jewish community that her grandfather shares with her and lets her use to save the staric that's a choice you know it, it, it 
it's not a simple choice. It's not meant to feel simple. And that kind of, you know, dynamic of like, what is true irredeemable evil for me, right? Fundamentally, it is this sort of, this selfish, unlimited hunger. It's not the, I want to protect myself. I want money and power in order to do either some good in the world for somebody who is not just me. But it's this just sort of unsatisfiable consumption, mm -hmm. right? That is sort of ultimately, I think that's one of my theses, right? That this is the real root of evil, that kind of uncontrolled, unlimited selfishness that is never satisfied, that can never say, this is enough, I have enough, I can give some to somebody else. That Chernobyl is not capable. And, mm -hmm. uh, you know, one of the things that I had quite a lot of fun with in Chernobyl in particular was um, he doesn't even all rhyme. He, he sounds like he rhyming quite a lot, but he's not true enough to be consistent. Like when he wants to to say, you know, he has a kind of sings, but if the Star King like rhymed, he would rhyme every single line. Chernobyl cheats. Chernobyl cheats all the time it, it, against his own rules he breaks his own code he is not true to anything so that distinction between redeemable understandable human kinds of evil and wrongdoing and where you know no there's just no way to do anything with this Mm. Like though the it was a dynamic that I wanted to play with. Especially, I love the um, juxtaposition between sort of you know fire versus ice. But when you look, at, you're right. When you look at the cause and what is fueling both sides, Chernobog is take, 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 consume, consume, destroy, destroy, just to try and feel. You're right, quenched. Barely, it can never be sated. Whereas the Steric King, we initially think that it's very empty, destruction, very cold. There's malice behind it, and then you realize that his version of events are just him trying to save his people and how is that any different to what Arena's trying to do with her people so I did like that I did have a question here from Vaden. Spinning Silver firmly establishes two of the antagonists the Staric King and Minertius as villains who hate their brides but they actually fall in love with Miriam and Arena at the end. Were these character arcs planned from the beginning? Knowing your writing style I'm guessing maybe not but I'm asking the question anyway. <laughs> I, I think I knew the Star King, you know, by the time I finished the short story, I knew that I, that in the book, Miriam was going to get the Star King, mm -hmm. um, slightly because the Star King is, is, uh, is Gareth from Labyrinth in my head a little bit. Um, and, uh, yes. and um, I, I wanted, you know, as, as a young Jewish girl, I wanted my own, I wanted Jared. I was like, you know, what, is, is I'm Miriam Jennifer Colony? You know, right. Connolly? Is that who Miriam could be, Jennifer? No, no. Oh, okay. I mean, not literally, but okay. you know, obviously, this is this is this is you know, but that's that was sort of my energy yes. for him in, in the book. Um, right. So I want Miriam to get her to get her king. Mernadius, I didn't know until really like late, really late that he was going to live. I didn't know in fact that he was because I didn't. I was waiting to figure out who he was, mm. like in terms of the Rumpelstiltskin story. I still didn't know who he was until really quite, uh, like they were walking, they were they were walking back, I think, from uh, in, from the tunnel, uh, in a conversation in the tunnel when when she and Mernat were Monatius, where we get Mernatius's point of view. Mm. I think that's the first time when he reveals to Arena that he's the mortgaged child, right? 